someone said to me, you have money? Damn, you're recording your videos in a shed. L-O-L. The shed is my secret power. Gray hair is my secret power, my superpower. You don't wear everything on your sleeve. Your power, your wealth, your skills. Keep everything stealthy, everything under the cuff, because you can lose it faster than you gained it. Keep that in mind. All right, so today's pipe is going to be a Saltinelli. That's from thepipenook.com. I'll put a link for this down below. And we are puffing on Haunted Bookshop. Let me find the proper thing. Haunted Bookshop, a tin. I used to get this in bulk. I'll never forget the first time I got Haunted Bookshop. <laughs> oh, I got done smoking a bowl and I got up. I don't know, 30, 45 minutes later. And that pipe said, whoa, buddy, you're not going anywhere right now. <laughs> I sat back down and I said, I will never get Haunted Bookshop ever again. That's never going to happen again. I will never have. It is too strong for me. I don't like what it does. Let some of those other guys have it. They must have a different constitution than me. It's not working for me. I'm not getting the same enjoyment from it. My next pipe tobacco order, four ounces of Haunted Bookshop. Something about it, I don't know what it is. But you're in for a treat today because I'm gonna puff and I'm gonna read something by Christopher Morley who wrote the Haunted Bookshop, the book. I don't have the book with me out here in the Van Gogh room, but I'm going to read something called The Last Pipe, or at least a portion of it. So I packed the pipe, packed the Saltinelli with it, and I'm going to light it right now. The reason why I'm dressed like this is because it's colder than my ex-wife's heart outside. And I don't have the propane heater on, and I want to be somewhat comfortable while I'm doing this. Let me just have a drink of my Ethiopian coffee first in the unstuck coffee mug. 2018 is the year that you get unstuck. You know that, right? It's only two months left of this year. If it's not this year, it's going to be next year. So 2019 will be the year that you get unstuck physically, mentally, sexually, work-wise, logistically. You can uproot yourself and make yourself unrecognizable. I always say this. My videos are meant to flip a switch inside of you. Something gets flipped that will make you unrecognizable this time next year. So where are we at now? We're at almost Halloween in 2018. Let's just say November 1st. By November 1st of 2019, you can be unrecognizable physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, logistically, geographically, work-wise. So many things can change in one year. I had a talk with someone recently ab about that, of how things can change in one year. And that's my message from now until the end of this year. I hope I help flip a switch inside of you. Something you hear, it's not, and it's not going to work for everybody. Something you hear in my videos as you watch them, in my content, in the Daybreak Show, in future messages, is going to flip a switch inside of you that's going to make you unrecognizable this time next year. Don't doubt me on that. Don't doubt me. The Saltinelli. And that's another reason why I preach the unstuck message. Look for the areas that people doubt you in. People see the gray hair and they think, old man. I like that. I like it when they think, old, irrelevant man. That is my superpower. I like it when people think, look at the car that he drives. Ah. You know, I used to sell cars many, many years ago. 
and I will never forget, a guy walks in with tattered shoes, literally tattered, scuffed, shitty shoes. Jeans that look like the ones I'm wearing now with stains on them. Looks like he was digging ditches. The salesman, no one jumps up to, to help the man. One person does. He knows what he wants. The man that walked in knows what he wants. The options, the model, the year. He knows exactly what he wants. They bring him back over to the desk, and this is a true story, can be verified. Actually, I might interview that person, the salesman. Go through all the stuff, the checklist, in the selling of that car. And then how salesmen, and, or how dealerships really make the money is in the financing. You know that, don't you? Trade-ins and financing is how they make money. You know that. He says, and how would you like to finance that? At that moment, the man pulled money out of his pocket and peeled off the exact amount. He said, cash, I finance nothing. Paid for cash for an F-150. I guess it was an F-150, if I'm not... What is the King Rancher truck? Some of you probably have that King Rancher. Fully loaded, the brown leather, beautiful, beautiful truck. Paid cash for it. Cash. But no salesman jumped up when he walked in the door because he was an older guy, gray hair, tattered clothes, unassuming, didn't look like he had money. He had a superpower that everybody misjudged him. What a great thing to be misjudged in life. Zippo. Pipe lighter. See, it's got that circle in the middle of the burning area. Tamp it. Hmm. Haunted Bookshop. This is something I usually smoke at night. I got it from the pipenook.com. And this pipe as well. I don't want to puff too hard because I actually want to walk after this. Christopher Morley, not unlike Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Ian Fleming, smoked a pipe, and there's a lot of pipe-smoking characters in their stories. We're going to get into that in just a second. Haunted Bookshop by Cornell and Deal. I got it from thepipenook.com. Let's just see what we have here. Let's read what they say about it. Another of the late Bob Ronowski's Blends, named in honor of the famous novel written by Christopher Morley, a burly and Virginia blend with just a touch of Perique. Haunted Bookshop. The graphic on that is just kind of cool. Do you like bookstores? Used bookstores? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a link for the works of Christopher Morley down below as well. So you're going to get Pipe Nook links to the Saltinelli 
to the tobacco. And I'm going to put a link to The Haunted Bookshop, the book. I want you to read it. And I want you to read it while you are smoking a pipe. It'll make a difference. Do you like the sound of a Zippo? I do. It, there's something about it. I don't know what it is. Watch, right? Watch. A Zippo. One of the ultimate ASMR sounds, especially if it's something from your past. Like the way that flame starts, it's like a whoosh. Listen close. But that ring when you first open the Zippo, just like a little, a slight bell. Whoosh. Close. Someone said, George, only you can make a Zippo sound romantic. <laughs> Having only 25% hearing, completely deaf in this ear, and literally, literally 50% of my hearing gone in this ear. I over-enunciate, which means that I make sure that I hear the vibrations and you might say, why do you move your mouth that way? Because if you turned off the sound of this video, you would still be able to understand what I'm saying by looking at my mouth. So I've learned to read lips, and I've learned to understand vibrations, and I created a voice for myself. I don't hear myself the way that you hear me. I hear myself through vibrations to the point where I have bone conduction headphones. I mean, I have all kinds of headphones. I'm an audiophile. And the bone conduction headphones, you can't hear them when you plug them in. You put them on and they don't go over your ear. They go right here on this bone. They wrap around your head and go on this bone. And there's a transducer, not a speaker, inside of the unit and it vibrates the sound to my inner ear, and that's what I hear. Take them off, you hear nothing. Put them on, make sure that there's contact, then you hear. They're great for driving. They're great for working out. And there's nothing in your ear. The burly is going to kick your ass. Puff it slow. I, I'm warning you, puff it slow. If you don't, you won't be able to stand up. I'm dead serious. That's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Just puff it slow. The Virginia, nice. And the Perique, let me put it this way. If you're eating a meal and you want salt and pepper, if you take a pepper grinder and do one grind of pepper on your vegetables. Not grind, 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 grind. Perique is like this. One grind of the, of the peppercorns on your food. It's just enough to add a little, a little zing, a little peppery kind of thing. That's what Perique does to a blend. It adds a little zing to it. It's like one twist of the pepper grinder. Let me just read something to you from Christopher Morley, just to kind of whet your appetite for his type of literature, which you're going to love, whether you get an actual book or the audio book. But let me read a portion of The Last Pipe by Christopher Morley. This was written in 1918. 
So this is a hundred years old. The last smoker I recollect among those of the old school was a clergyman. He had seen the best society and was a man of the most polished behavior. This did not hinder him from taking his pipe every evening before he went to bed. He sat in his armchair, his back gently bending, his knees a little apart. Man spreading. <laughs> His eyes placidly inclined towards the fire. You know, there's nothing like having a pipe and looking at fire. The closest thing to fire that I get here in the Van Gogh room is the oil lamp. The end of his recreation was announced by the tapping of the bowl of his pipe upon the hob for the purpose of emptying its ashes. Ashes to ashes, head to bed. A sensible man smokes, let's say, 16 pipefuls a day, and all differ in value and satisfaction. In smoking there is, thank heaven, no law of diminishing returns. I may puff all day long until I nigress with the fumes and soot. You can tell this was written a hundred years ago. When was the last time you heard the word nigress? I may puff all day long until I nigress with the fumes and soot, but the joy loses no savor by repetition. I agree, every pipe is phenomenal. It doesn't get boring the more you do, like many other exercises. It is true that there is a peculiar, blithe, rich taste in the first morning puffs. This is my first pipe of the day. Inhaled after breakfast, I'm not inhaling anything. I'm just puffing. And let me posit here the ideal conditions for a morning pipe as I know them. After your bath, and by bath, a hundred years ago, that did not mean sit in a bathtub or take a shower. That meant, that literally meant standing in front of the sink with a washcloth and washing yourself. Okay, so when he says bath, that doesn't mean he's in a bathtub. Hold on a second. Oh my lord, coffee in a pipe. Ah. After your bath, breakfast must be spread in a chamber of eastern exposure. Let there be hominy and cream, and if possible, brown sugar. There follow scrambled eggs, Shirred to a lemon yellow with toast sliced in triangles, fresh, unsalted butter, and scotch bitter marmalade. Let there be without fail a platter of hot bacon, curly, juicy, fried to the debatable point where softness is overlaid with the faintest crepitation of crackle, of crispiness. If hot Virginia corn pone is handy, so much better. And the coffee? Two-thirds hot milk, also with brown sugar. You know, that's, that's how I make my coffee. I actually heat up my milk. I actually use cream, like real cream. I actually put half a cup of cream in a measuring cup, put it in the microwave, and heat it up for one minute till it's so hot you couldn't touch it. And that's what I pour into my coffee after I make it. I pour hot cream in my coffee. It just makes it so much better. Try it. And I got that from this. And coffee, two-thirds hot milk, also with brown sugar. It must be permissible to call for a second serving of scrambled eggs, or if this is beyond the budget, let there be a round of judici judiciously grilled kidneys with mayhap a sprinkle of mushrooms grown in chalky soil. Don't you love this kind of literature? Things that you just, he speaks in ways that create pictures in your head as you're hearing it. But it's a hundred years old. Life was different back then, wasn't it? That is the kind of breakfast they used to serve in Eden before the fall of man and the invention of innkeepers with their crass formula. After such a breakfast, if one may descend into a garden of plain turf, murred about by an occluding wall, with an alley of lime trees for sober pacing, then and there is the fit time and place for the first pipe of your day. 
pack your mixture in the bowl, press it lovingly down with the cushion of the thumb, see that the draft is free, and then for your... Now this is a word that I don't know, with your Sakharets tan, Tanned Stickor. Two words, Sakharets Tanned Stickor. And so begun, a day so begun is well begun, and sin will flee your precinct. Shog, vile care. The smoke is cool and blue and tasty on the tongue, and the arch of the palate is receptive to the fume. The curling vapor ascends the chimneys of your nose. Fill your cheeks with the excellent cloudy reek. Blow it forth in twists and twirls. Behold the first pipe of your day. And then I'll read the end of the story here, which you're going to love. One o'clock is about to chime in the nearby steeple. But my pipe and curiosity are now both going strong. You're going to love this section here. You're going to love This is my favorite part. I can read this so many times. I've had people say to me, well, how do you... How can you just read stuff over and over because of the stories, the pictures in my head, because of how it makes me feel? <laughs> and this is the best part. You're going to you are going to love this. You're going to actually love this. One o'clock is about to chime and in the nearby steeple, but my pipe and curiosity are now going strong. But I dare not force my hobbies on you further. That's how I feel. I'm not forcing this on you. I'm just sharing with you the beauty of this hobby. One man's meat is another man's caviar. I dare not even tell you what my favorite tobaccos are, for recently when I sold to a magazine very worthy, an excellent poem entitled My Pipe, mentioning the brands I delight to honor, the editor made me substitute fictitious names for my dearly beloved blends. He said that sound editorial policy forbids mentioning commercial products in the text of the magazine. But tobacco, thank heaven, is not merely a commercial product. Let us call on Salvation Yo for his immortal testimony. And this is the best part of all. I'm going to read it deliberately and slowly. When all things were made, none was better than this, to be a lone man's companion, a bachelor's friend, a hungry man's food, a sad man's cordial, a wakeful man's sleep, and a chilly man's fire, sir, while for the stanching of wounds and the purging of room, R-H-E-U-M, and the settling of the stomach. There's no herb like it under the canopy of heaven. And by this time the bowl is naught but ash. Even my dear general catalog begins to blur before me. Slip it under the pillow. Gently and kindly lay the pipe in the candlestick. Blow out the flame. The window is open wide. The night rushes in. I see a glimpse of stars a distant chime, and fall asleep with a faint pungent Indian herb about me. The First and the Last Pipe by Christopher Morley, 1918. I hope you enjoyed that. You can get the Saltinelli at the link that I provide down below. You can get Haunted Bookshop at the link that I provide down below from the Pipe Nook. And you can also get the Haunted Bookshop book by Christopher Morley at a link that I provide down below. Have a great day. 
It's time for you to get unstuck. Start preparing. 2019 is the year that you get unstuck. And listen closely to my content. Because something that you hear is going to flip a switch that's going to make you unrecognizable this time next year. Cheers, my friends. Have a great day.